Welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Hello and welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. I'm Lauren Bolander, as always, with Captain Rick Murphy. Now, Rick, I heard you had a pretty big day on the boat this week. We did. We had some big, just yesterday, we had a really big day. We had some tarpon, we had snook, we had redfish, but you know what? This isn't really about me. This is about what we're going to talk about this week. So where are we going? You bet it is. Let's get, let's dig into it. This week, it's all about redfish. We'll have all nine of our trusty captains from across the state filling us in on those beauties and plenty more. And Navionics. We'll be zooming into the Central East region where Rick's going to give us a closer look around. And as always, we'll give it over to our boy at the workbench, Dave Farrell. Hey, Dave. It is all about you, Rick. It is. <laughs> no, it really Come is. Come on now. It's right now. It's all about you, Dave. <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about redfish, which is your, you know, area of expertise. So we're going to have a thing called On the Spot well, with this, Rick Murphy. It's new. It's brand new for just today. All right. I just thought it up. Oh, now I can start shaking now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant sort of work over here. I love being prepared for your segments. Get your job done. <laughs> Get your job done, he says. All right, Rick. You know, I do have a bit of a soft spot for the redfish since they were my first, like, real catch, as you might say, here in the Sunshine State. You, you know what? You're right, Lauren. And, you know, the thing that I love about redfish, it doesn't matter where you go. From the Carolinas all the way south to the Keys, all the way around to Texas, everybody knows about the red drum. And Lauren, I, I, I'm so excited about it because it's really one of my favorite fish. And as you can tell, we've got our guys that send in their photos every week of their contest. This is Greg Pierce from Northport, which is on the West Coast, certainly catching a nice redfish, a lot of beautiful spots. And then we got a couple girls from, uh, this was sent in by Jonathan Week Wickles, and look at the size of those redfish. Those fish were caught in Merritt Island. That's where the home of the big ones were. But more importantly, always got kids. This was sent in by Paul, and this is his daughter, Lily. Look at Lily's face. I mean, she doesn't know whether that fish is going to eat her or not, you know? <laughs> but the thing that's so great, and you're going to hear from all our captains, Lauren, we got redfish throughout the state and it's probably other than tarpon it's the single most popular fish because we catch them 365 24 7 here in florida all right well i tell you what why don't we go ahead and kick it off tonight in the central east where we find captain jim ross jim you were telling me that your region is a bit different from the others and that you get plenty of big redfish biting on the flats can you speak to that for us for a little bit Oh, we sure do, Lauren. You know, everywhere else you pretty much have to go out into the Gulf or out into the ocean and find some of those bigger redfish or in the passes, on the, especially on those outgoing tides. We have 40 and 50 inch redfish almost every single day right here in the Mesquite Lagoon, Indian River and Banana River Lagoon. So we actually get to sight cast of those big fish rather than just soak a cut bait in, say, 15 or 20 or 30 feet of water. But I tell you what, most of the guys in the Central East region, that is their main target fish. Reds can be found throughout the sandy potholes and on the flats. You can find them near sandbars. You can find them around mangroves. You can find them under docks. You can find them by bridge pilings. There's virtually no place that you can't find them at a given time of the year. Most of our slot size fish in the Indian Banana and Mesquite Lagoons just cruise the flats all days because we have no tidal influx here whatsoever uh, in the central part of our lagoon system. And the giant fish can also be found resting on the flats as well, as I was already saying. Uh, it, you just have to look a little bit deeper. Instead of looking in the 12 to, say, 20 inches, you look in the 20 to 40 inches of water, and you'll start finding those bigger fish. But once you locate a school, you want to be real stealthy, and for, especially for the bigger fish, live shrimp, tin fish, or mullet seem to be really good. Also, if you cut those baits, you can catch the bigger fish at certain times of the year. Now, some of these fish are going to measure into the 50-inch range and weigh over 40 pounds but most of them don't get quite that big. Our slot size redfish generally run from about 20 to 25 inches, and the broodstock fish average about 38 to about 44 inches. Now I've got a picture here of Sandy Atkinson. He landed this 45 inch red on a Rapala X-Walk that I handed him not too long ago. And this is a typical slot or over slot size fish for the Indian River Lagoon system when those fish are up on the flat. All right, Jim, before we go any further in your report, let's take a second and look at our two charts from Navionics. Now, the first one, you know, Captain Jim basically told me, guys, you need to understand, up in this platform area, up in the top part of this chart, the one thing that you got to understand, you got a lot of beautiful grass flats all and in and around here. What that means, if you guys want to throw popping corks for those trout, maybe a jig underneath, uh, that's going to be really what works very, very well. Now, as you can see on the intercoastal, we also have a variety of different little islands right here. Those islands, Captain Jim also said, throw topwaters early in the morning 
And what you're gonna end up finding is also a lot of trout. Now guys, the other thing that you need to understand, along this point here, not right now, it's not happening, but in the next couple weeks, the tail and redfish, all slot size redfish, they're gonna be in and around this point. So make sure that you come in, stage all around here, and you'll find, if you're technically pulling, you're gonna find a lot of those fish. Let's take a look at the other Navionics chart, and as you can see, you have all the different areas where you have depth changes. Depending on the wind and the conditions, because we have no tide there, you might wanna have to play closer to shore or offshore, depending on what the wind's doing and how it's driving the water. All right, Jim, let's continue. Tell me what else you got inshore in your region. Well, speaking of the speckled trout that are hanging on those drop-offs, Rick, we have them and they are improving every single day. Those areas you just mentioned, are the grass is growing, starting to sprout there, and those fish are moving in there because the bait fish are trying to seek refuge there. Uh, so we're finally starting to see those sprouts come up and the bait fish come in, and that's what those predators are looking for. We're using sea shad tails, shrimp imitations, and small topwater plugs uh, first thing in the morning. And uh, those seem to be working best for us. Or live shrimp or jigs under a rattling or popping cork. That's a great way to locate them as well. That's the way we actually found them today. Most of our trout are running less than two pounds, but we've had fish up to eight pounds this week uh, in those areas. So there's some pretty nice ones out there. And then offshore, we've got Spanish mackerel running right now. Not a lot of guys are targeting the Spanish mackerel, but there are quite a few of them here. Uh, most of the fish are in the 25 to 45 foot depths outside of the inlets. And you can find them feeding on the glass minnow pods there. We're using small to medium sized trolling spoons and gotcha plugs, or you can use a little four to five inch lip diving lure like the new Rapala Skitter Wrap. You can either cast it or troll it in the areas where the mackerel are feeding and you, it's real effective. The fly guys, clouds or minnows on a sinking line, tough to beat. You can catch some really nice Spanish. Most of them are going one to three pounds, but there's quite a few that are over that four and five pound mark, especially for those guys throwing those flies. And that's a handful on a fly rod. We've also got king mackerel. Uh, most of those fish are hitting slow told live or dead baits in the 50 to 90 foot reefs. Today, Captain Richard Bradley said 8A Reef was absolutely on fire. He had over 20 fish and he said they could barely put more than one rod out at a time before they had the next hookup. He was pulling live pogies, but you can also pull sardines and pilchards and cigar minnows if you have them. Put them on that double stinger rig like we all like to use when we're catching the king mackerel. Now, if you can't cast at cast net and, and catch bait fish, you can still go out there and you can pull the smaller size x wrap uh, lure in the size 12 or the slightly larger in the size 14 early and late in the day and you can catch those fish. Off Sebastian, the Pines and Bethel Shoal area seems to be working pretty good. Pelican Flats, 8A and the Coast Guard bottom is working really good off Canaveral. And then the Turtle Mound Party Grounds and East 11 off of Ponce seem to be good places this week. Now the fish are running around, so you gotta kinda hunt for them uh, from day to day, but once you find them, they're gonna be big. They're 20 to 30 pounds on average. Now I've got a, uh, a picture here of Jeff DiStefano, and he landed this king mackerel on a hot head colored rapala x rap like the ones I was ex ex explaining about. We were actually fishing on the Brevard Reef uh, when we caught that fish on a recent trip. All right, Jim, great report. Thanks for starting us off so strong. We're gonna go ahead and get to the Central East hotspots from the CCA region. Captain Jim says inshore, redfish in south end of Mosquito Lagoon, rig saltwater assassins and four inch shrimp in a mud bug or drunk monkey colors on a 4.0 VMC weedless worm hook. And then offshore, king mackerels on 50 to 90 foot reefs between Ponce and Canaveral. Slow troll pogies on a wire stinger rig. All right, Rick, now the Central West is where Captain Jeff Page runs the show, and let me tell you, last time we were out together, I was really wishing I had one of these babies, these Guy Harvey dry fit tees, because we got caught out in a big storm just as it moved in, but we did see a lot of redfish that day, Jeff. Yeah, and I was going to say, for as bad as it was, you did pretty good. I think <laughs> we caught seven or eight nice reds, and I'm going to use some of them in a, in, a, in a photo here soon, but I didn't today. But I have to say, Rick, she's a pretty good angler, and she kept her spirits up when that rain came in. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jeffrey, when you and I tarpon, I mean, per, uh, tournament fish, I got to tell you, it's hard to stay fired up and focused about fishing, and it's I'm impressed. Good job, Lauren. <laughs> you guys really knocked them dead, but Captain Page always catches them. He yeah, knows I tell you, he made it pretty easy for me. He did. Right. He did. <laughs> hey, Jeffrey, let's go ahead and get, let's see what's happening in your All region. Right. Tell well, me you, about the redfish. You've spent a lot of time in Central West red fishing, and uh, it's become our go-to inshore game fish, Rick, since the freeze of 2010. We have a variety of methods for taking them that consist of fishing live bait, such as shrimp, pinfish, pilchards, or you can use cut chunks of ladyfish or mullet. 
Uh, some of the more popular lures that we use are a variety of soft plastics like the Saltwater Assassin Sea Shed or the Saltwater Assassin 5-inch Jerkbait. Colors are all dependent on the clarity of the water, but in the West Central region, most of the time our water is pretty clean. Uh, they also like to rig up, if you're going to go into a scented bait, the Trigger X Shrimp and Grey Ghost or New Penny works real well. And we like to rig them on a 16th to a quarter ounce hookup jig head, all depending on the depth of water you're fishing or if you're going to be fishing it in grass or sand. Our, uh, the hard baits we like to use are suspending baits like the Mirror Lure Mirror Dean or the MR19 or the Rapala Twitch and Wrap or Subwalk. And lots of top water plugs work like Skitter Walks or Super Spooks. We fish for redfish, like you said, opening the show 24 7. 365 days a year. We found them around. We find them around grass flats, oyster bars, mangroves, all dependent on the tide. You know, sometimes in the wintertime, our tides are negative, so that fish are going to be out laying in holes or out on ledges. When you get those big summertime and springtime tides, they're going to push up around and underneath the mangroves. So you just have to learn your tides. And pretty much, once you get a bush or a shoreline or a series of potholes dialed in on that tide, you can pretty much count on it that you can go back there and catch your fish. Late summer and early fall is the best time for big schools of redfish, up to 200 fish, and our biggest fish get up in the 30-inch range. You aren't going to get many in the 40 unless you go way out in the Gulf like Jim Ross was talking about. I have a photo tonight of a good friend of mine, one of my good clients, Art Jacob from Delray Beach, Florida, with a nice red he got with me about a week or so ago. All right, let's stay inshore. What you got, Bubba? All right, speaking of the freeze, Speaking of snook, they're making a, a pretty good comeback, but in my opinion, and I know you'll agree with me, I believe they need to keep it closed for a little longer, but the catch and release snook bite is on. Of course, the pilchards have shown up. They're up and down the beaches. They're in all the inlets. They're on the grass flats near the passes. Wherever the pilchards and the glassmen are, pretty much you can bank on catching snook. Some of the inlets and passes down to the south, like Gasparilla or Stump, if you can't catch pilchards, free line live shrimp it doesn't matter incoming or outgoing just a good moving tide and you're gonna have you're gonna have a real good snook bite remember the water's real clear right now because we haven't had a lot of rain so you've got to use the lightest leader as possible suggest 20 pound fluorocarbon right. rolling offshore captain chris seeger of tight line charters out of uh marina jacks Minnesota. Reports the red grouper bite. You know, red groupers opened up a week or so ago. Red grouper bite remains strong. He's catching them consistently in 70 to 120 feet of water. And what he's doing, Rick, is he's running on his bottom machine. He's looking for any hard bottom with good bait shows, good bait stacks. Water temperature is bumped up to 72, 73 degrees, and the bite's really turned on. Live pinfish or sardines. Chris said it doesn't matter. It's getting to that spot before somebody else does and pulling a couple fish off it and then moving on to the next one. Species two, cobia bite remains strong. I know it was our theme species last week, but uh, 80 to 110 feet over wrecks and springs. Chris is catching them everywhere. He's been getting AJs and a lot of them have been big fish. Another captain today, I didn't get a chance to get the picture, but Captain Brian Marcy of Breakwater Charters got one going out the pass today on, on his way offshore, almost 45 pounds. They've been getting them on live pin fish and even vertical jig in a few. But uh, I have a nice photo tonight from Captain Chris Seeger of, of uh, one of his wow. anglers and his first mate, Jason Bowles, with a 65-pounder they got last week. Man, that's a stud. Thanks, Jeffrey. Great report. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Startron hotspots from the Central West region inshore Spanish mackerels. All, almost all of the inlets are and up and down the beaches in the entire region. Look for the birds and the bait schools, and then offshore kingfish, troll spoons, or x wrap 20s in and around the bait fish schools in 20 to 50 feet of water, Lauren. All right, well, well, the Florida Lottery is proud to celebrate a major milestone for Florida education. Together, we've raised $25 billion wow. for the education of the past 25 years, from constructing or renovating schools, over 780 schools at that, to opening college doors to over 600,000 students through Bright Future Scholarship, helping them realize their dreams. So thank you for your support of the lottery and for helping to create a brighter future for Florida education. And we're just getting started. Pretty soon you can keep an eye out for the Guy Harvey ticket, a really fun collaboration we have coming up.
Yeah. Yeah. It worked real well last year, as you know. So anyway. Yeah, I'll have to get out there and get me some tickets. We're gonna. I'll get one for you too. I'll All get right. one for you too. Remember, you must be 18 to play, or and please play responsibly. <laughs> All right, guys, stay with us on the other side of the break. We head over to the east to pay a visit to Captain Mike Holiday. Plus, Dave is at the workbench, and he looks pretty ready to take you off the deep end. He's 18. Well, he's 18. He is. I'll buy him a ticket too. <laughs> We're gonna let Murphy tell us how he became so famous by catching the redfish. Oh, <laughs> Every oh, little secret. It won't be long, guys. It'll be a short <laughs> conversation. Every little. All secret. right, guys. Make sure you check out our website, the Chevy Florida Insider Report .com, and like us on Facebook. You can even follow us on Twitter. We'll be right back. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Lottery, Yeti Coolers. Wildly stronger. Keep ice longer. Best parts, best prices. Bennett Auto Supply. Captain Harry's Fishing Supply Company. Chevy, the IGFA. Conservation through education. Get your hands wet. And Olukai. Want the power of a V8 with the highway fuel economy of a V6? Yes, sir. 40,000 more warranty miles than an F-150 work for you? Sure does. And you get two years of scheduled maintenance. Nice. Copy that. Sold. Chevy Silverado. Right now, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus Chevy truck owners can trade up for an additional $3,000 total cash allowance, or Chevy truck owners trade up to get a $1,000 loyalty cash for a total value of $8,500. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Imagine brighter futures, where doors open for Florida students every day. Imagine building a better tomorrow, where playing means we all win. Now celebrating $25 billion to education in 25 years. The Florida Lottery, just imagine. Looking for some action? You've come to the right place. The Florida Keys and Key West. Yeah. And now let's go over our news and notes from the FWC. All month long in April, you can learn the ABCs about boating safety. And on April 19th, the Youth Hog Hunt is in Highlands County. And on April 20th, the Kids Fishing Clinic is in Naples. You can find more information at myfwc.com. Now it's time to head off the deep end. You know, Dave, every week we go off the deep end, but it looks like to me, if we're talking redfish this week, it's not going to be so deep. No, it's going to be on. It's going to be a section called On the Spot. I'm going to put you on the spot today. Redfish has a spot. It was very yes, clever. Very clever. On the spot. My, I figured, you know, you're out there fishing these tournaments. I figured the fellas would like to know. There's several questions that I even would like to know. So I wrote down five questions. Okay. And the first one is, we heard about Jim Ross saying the tide doesn't affect his place where he fishes that much. I know I fish there, Mosquito Lagoon. Huh? But the most places where you fish, does the tide make a big difference? Oh, well, absolutely. You know, the key to finding good red fishing, in, in most cases, as the tide gets high, the fish have a tendency to take on that similar characteristic like a bonefish. Whether they school up or whether they, they're individuals or a pair of fish, they potentially get in mudding situations. And remember this about tides, guys. Whenever the water gets higher on a flat, what ends up happening is the volume of the tide sometimes is not as critical. So shallower water as the tide comes in is gonna have a lot more, in my opinion, volume. 
And what I mean is the fish are gonna, ha they're able to feed a lot easier on skinnier water because the water column itself is more affected by the tide. Once the water gets like this, even though the tide's still coming, it might not be as influenced, as I gotcha. much influence. I gotcha. Okay. All right, if you only had that one lure to fish, one lure, what would it be? And you know what's crazy about <laughs> this is it would probably be a subsurface rapala, like a subwalk. If the color is a part of it, then it's gonna be chartreuse and bone because I can catch them in clear water and chartreuse and bone as well as I can Dirty take that water. to a tannic water. Yeah, right. there you go. For sure. That's, that's, and that, that, was, seven that would surprise me. What did you think I was gonna I was say? Gonna a gold th spoon I, or I, something? I thought you were gonna say a, a, a jig, a well, jig of some sort. The truth is I really like the treble hooks. Well, there you go, there you go. All right, what's your favorite live bait? if you're ever fishing for redfish with baits. Well, in my neck of the woods, down in the Everglades, it's gonna be a shrimp in the winter time for sure because the fish get so keyed in, our water gets dirty, and the, the sniffer, the redfish really makes a living smelling. Right. He really gets locked in on that. Right. I think once the shrimp get out of the system, it starts to warm up, then it can be an array of different things and there's a state of confusion. They'll eat a mullet, they'll eat a pinfish, a crab. Yeah. In the winter, definitely it's going to be a shrimp, and so a shrimp is something they really, really can tone in on with their smell. Up where we live, it's that the blue crab, right. is probably the, the mm -hmm. king. Okay, um, what kind of equipment are you using now for chasing redfish, rod and reels? What are you using? Well, you know, certainly on the rod and reel size, I, I'm using a Shimano 4000 series uh, reel. The reason why I like the 4000 is the spool's just big enough, Dave that it doesn't seem to have a memory. Even though we're using braid, it's bigger in diameter, so it comes off of the spool. Seven foot spinning rod, not a seven foot six, because right. if I have to sight fish, I want a seven foot rod. A little if more control. Yeah, and if it's a six six spinning rod, then I can't get the distance. So I'm gonna start off with a seven foot medium heavy action and you know throw it a long way. And you're using what four, kind of braid? Four pound, suffix 832, and I'm using the four pound diameter, 20 pound test. For your leader, 20 pound test. Oh, uh, yeah, 20 pound leader, yeah. All right. Last okay. question. Do you ever resort to soaking mullets on the bottom? No, but I mean, <laughs> we do, so we'll soak a live mullet, or sometimes we'll even use cut ladyfish. Uh huh. Because when I, when I fish at night, and when we're, uh, we're out wading sometimes, if it gets dark, we'll, if we plan on staying stay the night, we'll break out some mullets and just chop them up. And we catch a ton of redfish on the bottom, like tarpons on a mullet head. You know, you can catch them that way too. But. Absolutely, and I agree 100% with you, whether it's a chunk of mullet or a chunk of pinfish or a chunk of ladyfish, certainly you're gonna use what you have a lot of or access to, but that red fish, again, we talked about it earlier. He, he smells, that he makes a living by smelling. I don't yep. think he sees very well. No, nope. he's very forgiving fish. That's correct. That's and, why we like him so much. And that's why it's <laughs> great to take the kids and the wife and everything, because you are you don't have to be an expert. Right, right, that's right, I've even caught him. Hey man, that was a lot of fun. I like doing I, that. You man. know what? We're gonna do this again, guys, when we have blue marlin. I'll Don, do it. For, I'll I'll do it. be the one asking the questions. That should be good. All right, Lauren, I got a question for you. Where are we going from here? Well, I have an answer for you, Rick. Next up tonight is the East Region. That's where Captain Mike Holiday is. And Mike, you reported that the redfish in your area get a little better further north toward Fort Pierce and Vero Beach. Can you explain that for us a little? That's correct, Lauren. You know, it, it's just. I don't know why they're not further south in big concentration, but if, if for consistency, the Indian River north of Walton Road all the way up to Vero Beach, that's got the better concentration of fish, most of them on the shoreline. The dots on the west bank of the Indian River near the power lines, the mangroves of Little Mud Creek all the way up to Middle Cove, Fair Point, the Northridge Flats, Queens Cove, and around the Harbor Branch, all those areas have fish. We're further south, we don't seem to see as many of them. And then in the spring and summer, the fish are real spread out. And in the fall, they grew up, they group up in big school. So those guys that are on the northern end, end of the range really lucked out when it comes to redfish. And they like the gold color. So gold spoons, topwater plugs, uh, or, you know, topwater plug with like a black back and gold side, or that copper juice colored bass assassin, foreign swim bait. Those are all good options. Uh, they really like soft plastics. And the next thing about that is you can work them slow and pause them a little bit on the bottom and let them sit in that strike zone. Live shrimp, live crab, uh, small bait fish like pilchers, those are all good options. And then when it comes to flies, any shrimp or, or crab pattern, as long as it's, as it's brown, and the average red fish in my region is 5 to 10 pounds. Now the other thing we got going is a really good push of mullet inshore this week, and that's got the snook focus on those baits. 
the islands in Lake Worth, have some really big fish around them, as do the seawalls and docks for the Loxahatchee River, the St. Lucie River, and the Indian River. North Bridge and Fort Pierce, the Tencent Bridge and Stewart, and the Lake Worth Bridge are all producing good numbers and good fish. Queens Cove and Bear Point, that's got reds as well as snook going right now. For baits, stop water plugs on the seawalls uh, and around the docks of First Light, live 8 inch mullet. 30 pound tackle with a 60 pound fluorocarbon leader and a 6 toe VMC circle hook. Uh, you can also slow troll his mullet at night. A uh, live shrimp on a quarter ounce hookup jig, pretty much the way to go. And then on the flats, a drunk monkey or Houdini colored bass assassin, 5 inch shad with an 8 ounce jig out. I got a photo there. That's Tom Bradley. He caught that snook in the Loxahatchee River, fishing with Captain Craig Krasinski of Jupiter, and they were fishing live mullet up against the sea walls. And the fish are locked on mullet right now. All right, let's go offshore, Bubba. Well, the spring, the spring king macrobite really kicked into gear in my region. There's good concentrations of fish off Jupiter in 70 to 90 feet of water, as well as around the Juno Pier, um, all the way up to Jupiter Inlet. Now, there's some fish on the Loran Tower ledge off Oak Sound and the offshore bar in Fort Pierce, and there's some smokers off 40 pounds in the mix, not just off Jupiter, but also on the beaches uh, around the Kingfish Hole in Hope Sound, the power plant in St. Lucie County, the doubles north of Fort Pierce and the Vero Cove. And those fish are working the, the bluefish and the mackerel school. So a live blue runner um, on a number four wire and a, and, uh, a number two BMC 4X strong treble hook is a way to go. You want a really strong hook on these fish. Uh, you can also use live mullet or goggle eyes or Spanish sardines, even thread fins. Um, and when you hook these fish, be really aggressive right now. There's a lot of bull sharks chasing them down. Average cane fish is 20 pounds, but just to give you an idea of what we're seeing, I got a photo there. That's Tony Greeton. He's holding a, a fish for four-year-old Andrew Stein. They caught that fish with Con uh, Captain Butch Constable out of Jupiter. That's a 45-pound cane that ate a live blue runner in 70 feet of water. Wow, now, that's a nice fish. That is. And the dolphin bite is all over the place right now. From 60 feet of water on up to 1,000 feet, the best stuff's taking place along the color changes or around floating weeds, but keep an eye peeled for frigate birds. Way out deep, that seems to be the real key. Uh, off Palm Beach yesterday, the bite was in 260 feet of water. I had several reports in the last couple of days off of St. Lucie County in 110 feet. Uh, a lot of the fish are coming in singles and pairs. You can troll value to cover water. You can slow troll live pilchards and spinach sardines. If you find a good patch of weeds or debris, just shut down and drift along and let the fish come to you. The best dolphin bite right now is coming on the day when there's some northerly direction to the wind. So either a northwest, a north, or a northeast wind is the way to go. Average stop right now is 8 to 15 pounds, but fish up to 40 pounds have been caught this week. All right, Matt, uh, I'm sorry, Mike. I gotta tell you, what I was sitting here thinking is, I know the water's really low throughout the whole state. Tell me about the bass fishing. It has a tendency to really concentrate the fish everywhere. Is the fishing good everywhere? That, that's the big key, it, it, it's really, uh, these low water conditions of spring really tighten up the fishing and, and make them a lot easier to find. Hot spot right now, I got a, tight, uh, got a good tip on a big bass bite on Lake Tahoe and East Lake Tahoe, and it's on artificials as well as live shiners. The real key, fish the grass in three to six feet of water, uh, as well as the canals that have the moving water. Uh, and, and soft plastics like thigh dappers and tap out worms in that June bug with chartreuse tail, red shad or green pumpkin, those are, the, those are going to outfit shiners on a lot of days, but the big fish are coming on shiners. It was a nine and three quarter pound bass caught in Goblet's Cove. That fish had a shiner. And then there was big fish coming in Fell's Cove uh, around the outside of the AJ Canal and the Runnymede Canal. So um, those areas are, are producing fish on lipless crankbaits, soft plastics early, and then shiners during the day. Average bass on toes, one to four pounds, but a lot of seven, eight, nine pound fishes. All right, great job, Mike. Thanks. I'm going to go ahead and get to the Ben and Auto Supply hotspots from the East Region. Captain Mike says, inshore, Jumbo Jack Crevals. Slot an oversized slot snook on the sea walls of the St. Lucie River. Topwater plugs or swimming plugs. Live 8-inch mullet on a VOC, VMC 60 circle hook. And then offshore, kingfish and sailfish on top, snappers on the bottom. Juno Pier to Jupiter Inlet, 70 to 100 feet of water, and you want to try any type of bait, live or dead, Lauren. All right, Rick, when we return, we're going to look toward the southwest and the northwest regions where our captains are waiting to fill us in. Stick around.